breakfast. He's back on the show. It's been a few weeks, and it's yeah. good to have him in. Yeah, Ben Good Yard. morning. Good day there. How are you? Good, w- good. BWAGY.com. You've been in Japan and a little bit of China as well. Yeah, I, I left um, a few days before the final. Bit of a fail on my part. But uh, so rugby fever, or a good time to get out. But you know, yeah, some might yeah, say yeah. as well, depending <laughs> on if things have gone badly. Yeah, yeah, if things have gone badly. <laughs> um, and I've come back to political fever. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's interesting. All on, isn't it? Two weeks or three weeks, and it'll be Christmas fever. Yeah, and but it summer. must seem like a world away though um, in Japan. Yeah, so um, I went via Singapore, so it's super super long flight. Really? Yeah. No, it wasn't it wasn't a direct. To uh, there are directs, but I booked kind of like six weeks out. So a lot of the direct flights weren't available. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, just to, to, an aside, was it wasn't fl- wasn't in New Zealand? Ah uh, no, uh, uh, Singapore. Air New Zealand does do direct. Yeah. But they've only got so many flights in on certain days. Right. So yeah. Okay. Um, right. Let's get but, that one out of yeah. the way. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah, I popped up to Japan, had a bit of a look around, met some business people up there. Yeah. Um, and also popped over to in Beijing. Tokyo initially. Yeah. 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 And mainly in Tokyo, I travelled around Japan, but I was mainly talking to business people in Tokyo. Yeah. Um, did that for about 10, 11 days. Then I popped over to Beijing, China for a bit. Um, and then I've got a couple of friends there that own companies and I've set them up recently. Cool. So a few learnings there. And yeah. Then I came back. But uh, the thing that really struck me about Japan is, um, and I think all Kiwi business owners should get offshore and have a look and go with a bit of business intent. You don't have to go you know, for a full business. Trip. All business owners or just people looking to export? Or? Just all business owners. Okay, right. Um, just... In New Zealand, there's 4 million people. In yeah. Japan, the market's 30 times the size of New Zealand. Mm-hmm. Um, An ageing population at that, by the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. In Japan, it is a massively ageing population. Mm. Um, and they just aren't having kids. Yeah, and a, a, a hugely wealthy population, too. Mm. So a lot of wealth in Japan. Um, it's a very industrial economy, um, lots of manufacturing, lots of exporting, um, massive financial services and investment. I think it's... it's it's now the third biggest economy in the world. I think it was the second. Mm. Mm. I think China's just made the charm of poor, yeah. something like that. Um, but so a massive country, um, and everyone lives so close to one another. And it really kind of struck me. In New Zealand, we come up with these um, world-class ideas, mm. which is probably a bit of a cliche, but we come up with really, really innovative and cool ideas. Mm. But then we fail in just leaving them here in New Zealand. Like great on massive on conception of ideas, not great on the execution of them. Okay, but there's and plenty of ideas that exist only in Japan, though, right? As well, I mean, yeah, you yeah. have to go there and see that they are on um, different, some, some completely different technology to us, in, yeah, in, in yeah. some sense. Um, and you see people, and you see just day to day in the street, just stuff that we don't yeah. see here. Yeah, so the massive cultural differences. Yeah. So the way that they do business will be different yeah. to us. Um, Traditionally, the Japanese economy has been very insular in terms of keeping things um, within Japan and the way that they do business. Mm. But you know, the world has changed over time. So um, their economy is shifting. Um, and they've had to deal with, for the last I think it's 10, 15, maybe 20 years, of actually having the whole economy in a, a gradual recession. Yeah. So they've had that kind of driving them quite a bit. But um, one of the interesting things is when you visit, you realise, oh, wait, actually, in New Zealand, we're ahead on this. We're a little bit behind on this. We're ahead on this. Um, and, for example, because I work in marketing, um, Facebook marketing. Facebook is only just taking off in Japan. It's mm. got 5 million members. And um, so it's starting to pop up on companies' radars. The biggest network there is something called Mixi, um, which is a bit different. And... Um, but in New Zealand, we've been doing Facebook marketing for several years now. Mm, mm. So that's just an example of something. Um, will, will Facebook become the dominant social media player so in Japan? It looks like it'll be number two there. Um, YouTube is number two there. The number one is uh, a video platform called Nico Nico, oh. which is, or excuse my pronunciation, I think. That's so the number, the number one plat- um, social network platform is around video? Oh, no, no, uh, in the video space. Oh, okay. YouTube is second. Right, um, and that's actually a, it's delivered by the equivalent of a telecom or a Vodafone, you know, like by a telco provider. Oh, okay, um, and the, uh, Twitter's growing pretty well yeah. over there. Tumblr not as big, but it, it's catching up. Mm. Um, blogging s- is still around, but you see that Facebook will be the dominant or second to. Well, it's shifting from nothing um, mm. to five million fairly, fairly fast. Okay, but the other thing is, from a from a New Zealand scale. 
Um, we've got two million members on Facebook. So in the early days, so half of us are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, but we've got one of the highest uh, penetrations of Facebook in the world in terms of uh, population. Yeah. But uh, just on a Facebook marketing side, the uh, you know the potential business there is already twice as big as New Zealand. It's mm. only just taken off. Right. right. LinkedIn is just starting to take off. Um, and yeah, so it's just a completely different ball game, and it helps you rethink how you do business here, and it really um, highlights what Kiwis are really really good at. Mm. Like there are a lot of marketing technology providers here in New Zealand which just don't exist in Japan or China and in a lot of parts of the world. And some of the founders I know are having a tough time here. Mm. Just got to get out of New Zealand. Like the market is just so, so small and the urban market is even smaller. So opportunities for New Zealand marketers somewhere yeah. like Japan? But, uh, um, I think right across the board. Uh, most Japanese people know about New Zealand. Um, a lot have visited yeah um and when i when I met up with n z t e they said there's a very small number of New Zealand companies in Japan. They said too often um Kiwi companies will look at Japan and say we we're never going to enter that market. We'll just get a partner and just let them do all the work mm. but really, to make it a success there, you have to um you know really put some weight behind it uh Fonterra and Orion health yeah um have made a big push into Japan. That sounds like they're doing quite well. There's a few other Kiwi companies uh, working away there. Okay, cool. But the other opportunity is to take um, services or content that we've got here and translate them into Japanese and execute them over there. What would be an example there? Uh, ooh, you just caught me. <laughs> <laughs> i say, for example, um, there's a lot of travel content which we have here in New Zealand, but... Not not much of it is translated into Japanese. That's hmm. a big tourism market. Right. So you could take that over. Um, or s some of our media content, which was kind of uh, some of the thinking I had. There'd be opportunities for... Because uh, I know a lot of people studied Japanese at school, didn't yeah. they? In the Japanese language. So there's opportunities here for to provide the service to translate your services... Yeah. To um to the Japanese market. So there's an opportunity for to be the yeah. middle person there. So yeah? you, um, that was a little bit of an insider... Tip I was given last week is if you do enter the market, hire um, some Japanese uh, employees who have studied in New Zealand because then they'll understand the New Zealand culture. On the flip side, you've already got Japanese people um, studying here as well as doing business. Mm. The, the Japanese business community in New Zealand is fairly big. So there's lots of reference points and people to talk to if you want to understand the market um, a bit more. And the other thing is, it's not that far away, it's um, only four hours difference time zone wise. Yeah. Um, the, the flight can be a bit of a pain, but 12, 12 many people hours or so. do it every week. Mm. Um, 12 hours isn't the end of the world. Yeah. And again, with the time zone difference, you can make that either productive time in terms of during the business day or through the night. Indeed. So it works and, um, and of course, the, the internet in, in Japan yeah. is astounding. You know, the, yeah, so talk about ultra fast. It's ultra fast, right? Yeah. Um, I caught up with a Kiwi guy who said at home he's got a 120 megabit line unlimited, yeah. but he doesn't use it because his 3G connection is unlimited. Mm. So he gets unlimited text, calls, data. Um, massive tablet use over there. Mm. So the striking thing which Kiwis will have about going to Japan is how efficiently they use space. Um, because there's so many people on a small um, land mass, yeah. they really, really value space. So people don't carry a laptop to work because um, that take, takes up space at home, at work, and then you've got to carry it on the subways, which are packed. Um, so tablet use is, use is massive. Um, I think 80% of people between 30 and 25, and this stat could be off a bit, is um, they have smartphones. Yeah. So smartphone usage is quite big. And 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 sometimes two phones, right? Yeah, our oh, two phones is massively popular. Um, there are even <laughs> yeah. billboards, and so um, the the popular combination is an old flip phone and a smartphone. Yeah, and the old flip phone is tied into um, an older network, which allows you to chat with your friends much easier. Yeah, and it must be that social network that you talk to. Yeah, Mixie. About. Yeah. yeah, so I think Mixie's tightly integrated yeah. into that. And so um, yeah, there were a fair few billboards I saw. Um, showing young girls with two phones, mm. which is amazing. And it looks like, um, I mean, a a Apple, of course, have been in the market there a wee while, but Massive. Android is is heavily um, advertising, or at least the manufacturers of the handsets are heavily advertising over there. Yeah, so um, Apple is, is massive in, in Japan. I saw iPhones everywhere. Yeah. Um, and they've got quite a few Apple stores. 
but on the flip side, so is Android um, Samsung uh, Galaxy. Yeah, that, that's quite big. Yeah, um, a lot like, of adverts for that. Yeah, place, a lot yeah. of adverts. Mm. Uh, the Galaxy Tab mm. as well, the tablet. Um, yeah, just just massive uh, smartphone penetration. But uh, and again, from my um, point of view, it's quite interesting to see that 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 marketing layer wasn't yet sitting on top of it. Things like um, text advertising weren't as prominent because they have a duopoly with two large firms which don't allow that. But then they had interesting things like um, using uh, PICs or MMS yep. um, instead of email marketing, which oh. is something that I hadn't seen done before, and that's because the cost to send here is so big. Interesting. Yeah. I know that, um, Vodafone were using that a while back yeah. for their customers sending those those daily yeah. up, uh, weekly updates yeah. as well but it never took off beyond just the carrier doing it yeah. here in New Zealand yeah yeah, cool yeah some a few experiences there yeah, it was real good real yeah good. Japan and a little bit of China we didn't hear much about China but maybe, oh, I've got more for China or do we have to go well, we'll do China next week or okay, something. Sweet. yeah hey. uh, Ben Young is over on Twitter twitter.com forward slash BWAGY and uh, BWAGY.com we'll see you next week cheers